as a result, their slogan became uh, showmanship instead of genius. Uh, and they turned to Val Luton to pull him out of financial uh, disaster. Luton had been a, a successful novelist uh, and had worked with David O. Selznick uh, on some important films. Uh, in the 1930s. He was evidently, as he told the story, he was at a cocktail party with some RKO people, uh, and he was introduced uh, as a writer of really, really horrible novels to some RKO executives. As uh, Luke tells the story, they thought they'd heard he was a writer of horror novels. And so they were looking for someone to do horror movies for them and hired uh, a Luton, uh, who'd never made a film before uh, on his own. Uh, he put together an amazing team uh, at RKO, uh, to some extent drawing upon the ruins of, of Citizen Kane. The editor of this film, Mark Robson, was the, one of the editors of Citizen Kane. So you'll see how beautifully edited the film is. In fact, as you watch it, you'll see uh, a lot of the influence of Citizen Kane on it, if you're familiar with that. The staircase uh, at Arena's apartment building is left over from the set that Orson Welles had built for his magnificent Amberson. So RKO was trying to recoup whatever he could of its experience dealing uh, with Welles. Uh, the director of the film is Jacques Tournour, who was a, a son of the very famous uh, French director Maurice Tournour, became uh, famous in his own right. He had worked with Luton uh, on the uh, uh, 1936 uh, film of A Tale of Two Cities. They'd done the big story of the Bastille scene there and they've gotten to like each other. So when Luton put together his team, he very wisely chose Tournour, who went on to make two more movies with him, The Immortal, I Walked with a Zombie, uh, and also Leopard Man. Uh, then RKO split up the team to try to take advantage of the two of them uh, separately, and Tournour went on to do one of the most famous film noirs uh, out of the past with Robert Mitchum. Uh, later in his career, he did films like Curse of the Demon, and. A comedy of Terrors, whose last film was called something War Gods of the Deep. Uh, these titles are all rather lurid, and they are the great RKO tradition. Uh, what RKO did was to give uh, Luton a title, Cat People. They didn't care what he did. Their marketing department had told them cat people would sell films. And so they gave him remarkable uh, freedom uh, to produce these films uh, as he wanted to, as long as he did them for $150,000 brought him in on time, and followed the title uh, that, that he was given. And so, you know, they did a sequel, Curse of the Cat People. Uh, uh, you know, I Walked with a Zombie, incredible titles. It's very hard to separate out who the genius behind this film is. Some people would say it, it is Jacques Tournour, the director. Uh, and if you look at uh, his films, a lot of them look like this, including Curse of the Demon, which he made on his own years later. On the other hand, uh, Tournour did only three of the nine films, uh, and you might conclude that Luton is responsible for the look. For the, uh, all these nine films uh, have a certain consistency of look uh, and of theme, even. A uh, theme of uh, the, the supernatural versus the scientific explanation of events. In fact, it does seem to be a good illustration of the fact uh, that movie making is a collaborative art, uh, no matter how much the French may be obsessed with their auteur theories. And the fact about Luton is that he uh, was an excellent producer and was able to put together a terrific group of people. In addition to Mark Robson, uh, uh, he, he had Robert Wise, uh, who later on went on to make many famous films, including The Haunting, one of the great old-time uh, horror movies. Uh, as you watch the film, uh, I'll just suggest uh, you look for two technical aspects of it. Uh, the use of light and shadow is fantastic. You'll see the roots of this film. You know German Expressionism at all. This is a magnificent uh, uh, descendant of the great German horror movies in the 1940s. Uh, 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 there's a good deal of visual symbolism in it. You'll see uh, the film opens in a zoo with a, a leopard, uh, a panther in a cage. Uh, watch uh, as we get to Irena's apartment uh, how they shoot it so carefully so that the shadows of the windows project prison bars or cage bars on her apartment. So there's lots of wonderful use of light and shadow. It's one of the great uses of black and white. You'll see it's a wonderful experience to see it in a theater. I had the good fortune of seeing this many years ago in a theater. It's going to be a lot better uh, than on DVD. And also look for the use of sound or listen for the use of sound. 
there's some, a lot of the fear in this film is generated by the artful use of sound. I mean, what Luton and Tournour are famous for is intimating horror and not showing it. Uh, uh, RKO wanted them to do something to imitate the great universal set of horror movies, Frankenstein, Dracula, and the Wolfman, which is really very well at the box office. Uh, uh, but in fact, they did just the opposite. They refused to use makeup. They refused to show monsters. They hinted them again and again by the artful use of light and shadow and by the use of sound. And that's what really makes this a deep, creepy movie. So I hope you'll enjoy it. And again, afterwards, Marguerite and I will come up and, and speak about it briefly, and then we can open the floor of discussion.